This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Thursday. Today is Thursday. Thursday, July 20th. And it's after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri and I shall be your host for the day as we have a Analyze the News Thursday. And we have another Analyze the News Thursday for a bit. So I had to bring back the entire team, the entire mash. Man Down Mash of Wednesday team who will be Aaron Green and of course Ian Munning to come and say, hey, y'all come and analyze the news with me, right? So I'm going to speed this thing up because we have so much things inside the news to analyze because the news is hot. The news is hot and so many things is happening. And I want to know that, did you really understand what was happening? But my first thing I want to do, I want to play a clip. I want to play a clip because there seems to be an international row between Jamaica and the United States, and I want to know exactly what is happening. Some people say that some bullying is going around, and I want to say, hey, Aaron, Ian, let's analyze this, and then let's pick one or two things from the news to analyze, and then let, let the listening audience come and do commentary about it. So, producer, play that clip quickly, and then we'll analyze that to see what we think. Go ahead. As a community and all the privileges of a diplomat, it's believed the Jamaican government did not respond to the request immediately. The U.S. sent another diplomatic note demanding a response. The Jamaican government responded, rejecting the request. A senior government source told me the Jamaican news, quote, that would mean Jamaica recognizing same-sex marriage, which is illegal in this country, end quote. Our sources tell us the U.S. then responded, rejecting a request from the Jamaican government to extend the stay of three diplomats in our embassy and consulates in the United States. The U.S. served notice that the trio must leave immediately after their five-year diplomatic visa expires. Now, this is in contrast to what previously obtained were extensions to diplomatic visas for Jamaican diplomats beyond the five-year period would be routine. Among those affected are Jamaica's ambassador to the United States, Audrey Marks, and Consul General Oliver Mayer, based in Miami, who, as the Americans say, must leave and return to Jamaica this year. It's not known what other diplomatic measures, if any, the United States government might take against Jamaica in light of the government's refusal to grant immunity to the spouse of one of its diplomats. Wilson Walker, Radio Jamaica. Yes, and I just want to go and um, um, explain that again. This is one by Radio Jamaica News. This is Karen Madden. He says, diplomatic row reportedly brewing between the U.S. and Jamaica after U.S. requests a diplomatic immunity for spouse of a diplomat in a same-sex marriage was rejected. U.S. reportedly retaliated by rejecting requests by, uh, for, ex for extension for three Jamaica's diplomats based in the U.S. And I, that's what I want to talk about. Um, first of all, Let's start off with this, right? United States has now implemented a policy that um, diplomats, foreign diplomats, have a five-year stint, and then they must apply, and the United States will reconsider if they're going to allow for them to extend their, their diplomat uh, request, right? And one reason for that is in five years, a resident or the person, in this case, the diplomat, can apply for, for permanent residence, mm -hmm. right? So imagine a foreign diplomat, we can put it in the Bahamas inside here, um, has a diplomatic status in the United States. The five-year stint goes by. They ask for an extension after year five, going on year six. You can actually apply and maybe granted uh, U.S. status, right? So in order to avoid all of that, they say, man, no, you got to come over to the country and reapply, and then we'll do special considerations 
if, if need be, or you need to find a new dip diplomat to replace them to in order for us to avoid these people them having the access to it. Go ahead. And that uh, policy apparently was implemented in August 2021. So it's been there a while. Yeah. It's been two, two years now. So the, Jamaica is aware of it. The Bahamas is aware of it. The world is aware of it that, hey, you ain't getting this automatic two-year, two-term stint as being a diplomat. And you would, the United States have a right to, uh, to accept or decline or whatever it is, right? So we're starting off there. Now let's go to the issue at hand. Um, United States have some diplomats going to go to, to Jamaica. And this, uh, this particular diplomat has a same-sex husband or wife. I'm not sure what it is. Husband. A, so husband. Spouse. spouse. Spouse would be the word you use. Okay. okay. Spouse. I wasn't sure if it was male or female. Right. But so I think it's, it's male. Gender. Okay. No problem. Yeah, I think it's um, male. And um, as since they had this spouse who is requesting, and they know that Jamaica is actually also seeking an extension, right? And they said, okay, if, if you want the extension, I understand that it's, it's a request, and you know it's not automatic, and you have to apply, and we don't do that no more. We're willing to allow you to have your three people them to get the extension if you allow us to have our person have their spouse come into, into the country. Say, so, quid pro, quid pro, how the, how the, how the phrase is? Quid, quid pro quo. Pro, yeah. And they said, that's fair. And of course, it, someone leaked it inside the Jamaican uh, media. The Jamaican church got involved and said, no, we are a Christian nation. We don't dance on our head. I mean, we are a good godly nation, right? <laughs> and we have no sin here. And we won't do that because uh, gay marriage is against the law. And in spite the um, United States asking for such, right? Despite um, we allow uh, gay tourists and, 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 and allow gay, um, gay people to live inside, inside Jamaica, we will deny this person diplomatic access and, and rights, but we still want our people come in the United States, uh, or the, want the United States to do us a favor. And that's where the debate is. And I want you all comment on it. I want Aaron to comment as an activist. Let's talk about that. And then you comment as, uh, Ian, as, a, as a man on the street. What do you think? Go ahead, Aaron. Let's let Ian comment first. You are, we will go last. I really wanted Aaron to comment first. So <laughs> but, we could then but that's okay. Go, you go ahead. But go I, ahead. I would go first. Um, look at it from a different perspective, right? Our brothers from the, our big brothers from the North, um, have a habit of basically dictating what it is that they want to do and infringing what it, what it is that they say they want to happen or see happen, right? Infringing? Yeah, they're infringing. They, so they're saying to you, if you don't comply, these are the, this is what's going to happen if you don't comply with what we want you to do. They force no one to comply, though. Well, you don't have the three um, ambassadors that you currently had. Send three more. Based on, but they could refuse those also. No, no, they won't refuse those. Yeah, yeah. Saying, the issue here is not refusing Jamaican uh, 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 but diplomats. Know. Hold on, let me make this mm -hmm. point. They have several Jamaican diplomats there in the United States, all through the United States. Yes. These three need an extension. Right. The United States don't do extensions. They are, the United States saying that they are willing to do the extension if you're willing to uh, accept our own. So they're saying, we ain't forcing you. We're but just the, saying that but, if but, you want this, but the, you're willing. But it's similar to what you're saying with the vaccine. We're not saying that you don't have to take the vaccine, but you just can't come on the job. I think the point Cecil is making is the conversation would have never ar arisen, right? The conversation, we wouldn't be having the conversation if Jamaica didn't say, hey, U.S., we know you have this policy shift. We're asking you to, to sort of exempt us from that new policy shift and give our three diplomats an automatic extension of their stay. If Jam what the, I think the point Cecil is making is if Jamaica hadn't come forward and said, hey, will you do us this favor, then the U.S. wouldn't have had a space to come back and say, if we do you this favor, can you do us this favor, right? And I think it's a question of whether that's a fair favor. Right? Like, that's, that's the question. It's like, hey, can I borrow your car? And I'm just throwing it out there. May, you know, maybe this is what it is. Can I borrow your car? Sure, you could borrow my car if I could borrow your wife. That's a, right? Like, they, they could say, like, maybe <laughs> that's, a, that's the space in which we critique the fairness of the exchange, right? But the conversation would not have arisen if Jamaica didn't say, hey, we know you changed your procedures, can we have an exemption or can you relax it for these three particular diplomats? But, but the procedure will be different from the law. 
because they're saying the law in Jamaica is that this can't happen. But we, they're, they're saying that, can you do us a favor of a practice? No, there's that a law in the practice. They ain't doing it no more. They can actually uh, make make a, 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 a consideration to extend it. Right. They said no. And I think the point Ian is making, though, is the ask, what, what the U.S. is asking for. Like, what I would say is, it's not unreasonable for the Jamaican government to say no, because what they're saying is, how can we permit a foreigner to be able to enjoy a thing that citizens cannot enjoy because it's against the law? Let's question this. Point taken. Let's well, question this. Let's say a U.S. citizen has a second home in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and they have a same-sex spouse. That's, I guess that's right. That's yeah. Right? right? Um, no matter what law that Jamaica <laughs> say they have about same-sex, those two people married, <laughs> and they married in the United States, and they have all rights to make a complaint all they, what they want. The assets will be transferred to their spouse. I'm not sure. I know in the Bahamas, the Bahama, the Bahamian court system. Don't recognize al it. Hold on. Although we do not, although we do not allow Bahamians, right, to have a same-sex marriage, we did have legislation that permitted officers, like religious officers, on boats, captain people who could marry people on the boat. They permitted those cruise ships. Uh, and, and those officers to perform marriage ceremonies within territorial waters, right? That's, I think, the first thing. And that would have happened, I think, around 20, I want to say 2010. The next thing is, I know that, that the Bahamas does not offer, like, same, they're not going to perform a same-sex marriage here, but they do recognize same-sex marriages from other jurisdictions when it comes to particular issues like uh, divorce, right? And I think uh, dissolution of a state, if a spouse dies, right, and those assets are in the Bahamas or under the jurisdiction of Bahamian courts, they recognize it. I don't think it's the same situation in Jamaica, though. Because mm. remember that the, in the Bahamas, we decriminalized buggery in 1992. Jamaica is, has not decriminalized buggery yet. So not only uh, are same-sex marriages unlawful, but buggery, right, is also against the law. And the presumption is that married people have sex, right? Like, that's a given. In fact, th th these people can tell you that's why you get married, eh? Mm. The presumption is, is that married people have sex and buggery is against the law. So, so as we transition to another topic, right? And you choose the next topic, Aaron, which you want to talk about, right? And Ian, you choose the topic after that. Um, as we transition, we know that Jamaica is limited in terms of having qualified diplomats, just like the rest of the Caribbean, right? They train, they have a, a certain number of qualified diplomats, maybe, maybe 50 or whatever it is. Taking three <laughs> out of out of out of commission to say you got to send them someplace else will impact <laughs> Jamaica, right? Whereas this ain't impact the United States at all. I say Jamaican may need to reconsider in order to make sure that their people and their interests is represented in the United States that they have access. We'll do a shuffle, transfer them to another jurisdiction, and allow some but some another delegate to come to America. That's I mean, what, it's simple. That's what happened, but that that means new training. Usually, you keep but, this, this keep the same people there for at least two terms in order to but the, to have that trained person or who, who, uh, to be there. Can you imagine starting from scratch again when you have someone there who's been there five years and you need that five years worth of training. And then you have to bring them to a brand new and say, okay, you have five years of training again but instead of taking advantage of the training they had before. My question is, do they have to accept the, the ambassadors that you wish to send from your country to their country? Do they have to? No. Um, and, and these are diplomats, not ambassadors. And uh, we've had um, ambassadors here uh, who was rejected by the United States. Yes. And then we had to replace them by somebody else. Uh, by somebody else. Yeah. Yes. And that's a recent time. Right. So it, it's... it's and um, I mean, if I could read just a headline, no diplomatic row between U.S. and Jamaica, says government. This is from Loop Jamaica News in yesterday's paper. And it says, there's no diplomatic spat or, as the media reported, diplomatic row between Jamaica and the U.S. as we continue to enjoy strong and positive diplomatic 
uh, relations, right? So the, the U.S., I mean, the Jamaican government is, is not taking it on like a fight, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I guess it's more like a, a negotiation. What I would say to Jamaica is uh, offer, something, offer something else. Mangoes? You, you, what can Jamaica offer? You make it get plenty to offer, man. Like, like what? Aki. <laughs> don't be like that. And salt fish. That's the United States we talk about? No. They yeah, cri- don't they, be like that. They can, they can boycott and cripple a society. Ask people. <laughs> what do Jamaica has to offer? You learn to Jamaica, negotiate. Jamaica has a lot. Look here. Jamaica has a lot to offer. And as a part of the CARICOM body, we Jamaica has a lot of support within the Jamaica. Really supporting Jamaica with this? You, you want to be quiet? They said, let y'all fight. Y- y'all can fight this by your own. We ain't commenting on this at all. You know, that's Jamaica oh and, and, and the United States route. Did we have flags that were flown here in the Bahamas? Well, we have, I wonder if Jamaica had any flags. Of course Jamaica had flags flown yeah, on the embassy. They, I think they, they flew it at the embassy. Remember now, Ian, they decriminalized, we decriminalized buggery in 1992. It's not against the law to engage in same-sex intercourse. And it's never been against the law to be in a same-sex romantic relationship. These things aren't illegal. Right. In fact, you can't a, a, a state of being can't be illegal. You know what I'm saying? They can only criminalize an act, and and we decriminalized that act uh, 30 years ago, four, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. We have a caller here, but Aaron, get your 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 topic soon up soon. Um, Pat, producer, let me let me put that through. Let's see if I get that. Can you hear me, caller? Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning to you. Morning, morning, morning to all. I, I I want to know what do you consider as what do you call a marriage? Would the law consider marriage, or would I consider yeah, marriage? Yeah, yeah. With the Bible, I want the law. Oh, the Bible. You, you should have said the Quran. You, you changing books now on me. Why are you changing <laughs> books on me? No, I'm talking with the Bible but now. Then the you, but then you, but I, That's I, the only book I know. But, but I ain't decided. But I ain't decided though. Why, okay, why you can force me, 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 me to say? Let me think. Let me let me let me say something. I believe a marriage is a union between a male and a female. Okay, good for you. Okay. So there's nowhere in the world two males could get married or two females could get married. They maybe can have a union, but I don't think they could get married. Oh, it can't oh. be a marriage. Well, the Bible doesn't have the, the, the what do you call it when you have the inclusivity, inclusivity of the authority of all marriages? There's different religions and different yeah, laws. Yeah, but I, I'm speaking with the Holy Bible. It's yeah, called, but I say... the true that, word of God. And That's I, what I'm talking. And I, and I, I ain't talking with no... Quran and no just thing and that thing. I'm talking with the, the Bible. And I hear you. I just saying that yeah. that's just one view. Now and now and, and, and then another thing. I gotta go on this. If there is two, I don't I don't condone it. I'm not I don't, I'm not a part of it. But if there's two, two adults is attracted to each other, whether they're of the same sex or of 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 different, it doesn't doesn't bother me. It becomes my problem when I see an adult trying to prey on children. That, that, that is my problem. Yes. Now, two big men want to go down and die and hold on and kill die my business. Two women want to do it, die my business. And, and I appreciate that, and I have no and, problem with what you and said. And not now. only that, anytime you see them doing that like that in public, they're really looking for attention. Okay. That's yeah, and, 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 and I understand the sentiments, especially in our society. Well, I, I agree, because when, when straight people are engaged in uh, excessive displays... Yes, of I get upset. Public, ...of affection in public, right? Like excessive displays. Um, I think that's problematic as well. Yes. Anyone, heterosexual or homosexual or any other sexual but uh, we, public. We, heterosexuals surely have their sexuality on display every day, everywhere, all the time, in the marketing, in the programming, in the clothing, in the music. But we use that, man. This, this new thing is new, man. You can't be judging too hard. No, I'm not, I'm not judging at all. I'm just making an observation. The same, no, but I know if I like your observation. Let's get this. <laughs> I, I all right with that. Let's get another call here. Go ahead, call it. Can you hear me? Yeah, heterosexual, we've been used to it. We grew up with that. And it's kind of accustomed to so we kind of like that. I like custom. We think that that's the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I like, custom. I like custom. You know, a man with a woman, a woman with a man. Mm-hmm. But for now, nowadays, there seem to be some people who are in transition. They, they were born a certain way, but they are in transition. They're transitioning to something else. Well, that's understandable, too. But I can tell you how I go about it. <laughs> I, I applied for a visa, and the biggest mistake I made on the application was to say that I was divorced. 
Now, me and this woman will speak, but now I gotta go. I, I gotta go find these papers. So I asked the lady if I could reapply and probably put that I'm single and probably put that through because once you get tied up with somebody in this life, it looks like even though you're not together anymore, you're still together. But anyway, I have a cat. His name is King Charles. And when I die, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be well taken care of. Cat never lied to me. We don't have sex, but I love him. Have a wonderful day. Okay, uh, that, that's kind of peculiar, but go ahead then, you and your cat. Once he's not implying that he can marry the cat, we I, all I, I think he's gonna marry the cat. <laughs> right, that's what I heard. Anyway, go ahead, caller. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, okay. everybody. It's gotta be a comedy show this morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Green. Mr. Mr. Dury, Mr. Green. You know, you know. Sometimes I wonder, me growing up, why we even be discussing this? But I, I find, to me, whether it be the Christian nation or what, I believe in nature and I believe in God. And there's a reason why nature or God put a but, woman. But let, let's talk about the United States. Hold on, pause. And, 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 and Jamaica. Don't talk about nature. You all go to Google and. Google nature and sexuality. Just do me that favor. Just do me that favor. It sounds like we're going down a slippery slope. No, I don't want to talk about it anymore without some informed opinions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate everything that everybody has said. Those are opinions. Those are informed by their li lived experiences. And I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. I, you know what I want to talk about, though? Go ahead. Lobster season fares over boat registration fee reform. What's happening with the lobster people? All right. So uh, July 1st, new... July 1st, I don't want to say new fees because I'm sure the Prime Minister promised no new fees, right? But I think that the increase... I thought he said no new taxes. A, a tax is a, a fee is a tax. Oh, okay. A fee is a tax. I don't... The fee is a tax. Anyway, the point is this, is that the boat registration fees have increased uh, significantly, exponentially. Some people say tenfold, right? Those, that legislation was passed July 1st. All, uh, lobster season opens, crawfish season opens August 1st. A number of uh, fishermen are concerned about the impact of this exponential increase in fees on the local crawfish industry and how it impacts the ability of the average fisherman, the, the, the crawfisherman to, to be ready to go out on the water and catch lobster. If I could read from the article quickly, Bahamian fishermen were yesterday, quote, eagerly awaiting promised revisions to the over tenfold increases in annual boat registration fees amid fears the reforms will not take effect before lobster season's August 1st start. But are the fishermen complaining? Yes, they are. Where are they complaining? When they, they have, have Sweden as their champion? Well, listen, say what? They have Sweden? Clay Sweden is the champion for fishermen? No, no, Clay Sweden is the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources. He ain't a champion? That's, that's fisheries also. Yeah. Right, no, but that, he's a champion. We're not, questioning, champion. we're not questioning what is... Fisheries, we're questioning whether he is the champion. He's the champion. I mean, are you going to say that, right? But if I, I get one article. Well, they say, listen, they, listen, they, I get they say the man is Sweden, the champion. Sweden seeks update from BPL on Eleuthera power woes. MP for Central and South Eleuthera, Clay Sweden, said yesterday. Mm -hmm. They say MP. Mm -hmm. Clay Sweden is a cabinet minister. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the cabinet minister, Clay Sweden, engage BPL? Why the MP? I can tell you why. Go ahead. In the light man, he's because, the fish man. Because he is <laughs> he's not, not a the champion. Light man, he's the fish man. Because he's not a champion. But my, but, 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 but hold on, let me read the article <laughs> because I because this boy challenged me to suggest that the fishermen's them are not actively engaging the processes and mechanisms available to them. Please join. Right? He's a champion. Paul Malis, the National Fisheries Association secretary, told Tribune Business that following meetings with cabinet ministers and port department officials the industry had been informed that a new boat registration fee schedule for both first-time payments and annual renewals will be unveiled to ease financial impact for commercial fishermen. However, no timeline for when the changes are to be in introduced has been confirmed. What Malis goes on to say in this article, and it's repeated several times, is that the fishermen feel blindsided. Mm. Hold on, they feel like they, they, were not cons hold on, they were not consulted. Now, Clay Sweeting sits... 
Now, I, I need to say this, Ian. You caused this. <laughs> I like Clay Sweeten. <laughs> you caused this. See, Clay I caused it. I didn't cause it. Clay Sweeten sits. Yeah, I apologize. Ian Munnings did not cause this. Yeah, see, he caused it. Caused Thank it. you very much. But the po- yeah, he worked for BAIC. He couldn't have caused it. It, it, it ain't him. It ain't him. It, Definitely it ain't me. It's you or me. I say he's the water champion. Right, it's you or me. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is this, is that Clay Sweeting sits as a cabinet minister mm-hmm. in the same cabinet, right, that, that the BPL has to come and report to. That's mm-hmm. the same cabinet, right? He's a cabinet minister. Why would fishermen have not been consulted? Or how could you call him a champion mm-hmm. if all the fishermen are saying that they were not, cons- they were they not are, properly consulted on this matter? They are fishermen. When the prices weren't taxing you, the Bahamian people still were paying high dollars in terms of getting fish that was in our ocean. I mean, come on, a snapper. I mean, look, we got to be eating tilapia that's imported porn fish. L- look what we're eating. You know, you think that they shouldn't been serving snappers on those lists, or is it too expensive? Mm. This is a question of the you even before the taxes was raised. So no matter what it is, it's still going to be a problem. If the consumers, the Ooh. Bahamian people, the Bahamians, aren't going to feel the the love and that, I think then that's the issue there. Not the issue of the mere fact that the tax is going to be raised. These things have to happen. So Clay Sweden, as, mi- as minister responsible for fisheries, is not sitting in cabinet, in cabinet and attempting to protect Bahamian fisheries, Bahamian fishermen, by ensuring that there's a strong enough lobby against the import of non-native fish in, an inv- in, in the largest archipelago in the region? You go to Monaco and buy fish? Oh, that's where I buy my fish from. I'm glad you said that. Um, you see the cost of a snapper, or the cost let's, of a fish? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about I'm it. I'm glad you're going. No, no, let's go. Let's talk about it. Okay. Let's talk about the cost of energy, the cost of fuel. The fish free, though. No, the, no. They're getting oil in the water, the fish too. Isn't, the, fish the fish is free, because they're there. You're not going to get it. Everything has a cost. The, the cost of fuel okay. to get out there, right? The cost of boat maintenance, mm-hmm. the cost of... Maintaining your staff because you got oh no you got staff to take care of. But that's nothing new. But but the people on the line ain't doing. The people on the line are paying the taxes, uh, aren't we? We're paying the taxes for all of those things that you say, right? The people on the land are also we're paying the, and double taxes no, no, to that compared the, to them. No, not at all. And the people on the land are also deeply. Con- I don't use the word complain because some of y'all don't understand that. I don't. And they don't make the same kind of money. Are deeply concerned about not just the sharp increase in fees and taxes, but they are also complaining about the lack of consultation, the inability of the government to recognize them as key stakeholders in these policy discussions on the land and on the sea. So the wet money fellas have a saying, I, the wet money fellas have a saying on the, on the water, once they're on the water. Back in the day, we had it, we said, sponge it, money never done. So let me tell you, the fisherman money never done either because those guys make serious money. They used to say FTX they make, they money. They a lot of money. They used to say FTX money well, never done either. Sponge money, money finish. Sponge money will never finish. That finish. Sponge money still going on. Hmm, that's more money. People are still sponging. That's more money. With who? With the people who ain't doing it. Yeah, I remember this is straw market money. Would never done five snapper for twenty five. <laughs> but 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 <laughs> but let's conclude on this subject. Yeah. What else you want us to know, Aaron? Because I want Ian to get his his report. Uh, what I want us to know that this can possibly have a detrimental impact mm-hmm. on food security, but more importantly, food sovereignty. As a Bahamian, I'm going to tell you, I am offended. Like people call in here and say, I am offended that you even talk about. Same-sex people trying to get married. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I am offended that people would think it decent and Christian to offer me overpriced foreign fish, pretend that it's local fish, pretend that it's local fish, without even an attempt to build a relationship with fishermen that could provide them fish, local fish, at a reasonable cost. But it's deeper than that. That's just food sovereignty. In terms of food security, by restricting, by, 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 inc- by increasing these fees to this astronomical level, you have, re- you have restricted a vast majority of your food sources from going to work, which means that you have to rely on importers and the merchant imagination to so, feed you. So it's fish- a serious problem. What are the fishing association people plan to do? The fishing association people continue to lobby the government. They are, I think, going to support, try attempt to support each other to make sure as many boats as possible could get on the water. Uh, they are asking the government to, they're asking the public to support them for the government to give a, 
a definite timeline on when they can expect the changes so they can forecast when they will be able to get out on the water. And they ask, I guess they're asking the government to move at the pace of the lives of the people who they govern. That's fair. Ian, what's your highlight today? What would you want to talk about? So talk to the mic. Yeah. So, somebody sent me a, t uh, a tweet um, on terms of yesterday uh, what, con what happened in the House in terms of Penta Trigger's house uproar. Mm -hmm. I was looking in that, and they sent me a, a, a video, and they was like, uh, look, look what he's saying. And they were saying something with a money for hire kind of thing. I don't know. No, 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 no. Is no, there no, a need no, to no, play no, the video? No, no, you no, want no. us to get the video, or are we just talking about it? There was, there was no, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that from it, right? Mr. Pintar, the leader of the opposition party, had the floor. I get the impression from the Honorable Obi Wilchcombs, and we say the Honorable Pintar and the Honorable Obi Wilchcombs, and I want you all two gentlemen to know that I'm using that word very, very lightly right now. Oh, no. No, man, Mr. Nuri. No, the, ba the behavior in the house was atrocious, but here's the point. The point is because you all ain't really defending the people. That's not what y'all do. And y'all, 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 y'all row in the House of Assembly, and then y'all go make money in the banks. You go drink together. Y'all go have a good time together. Neither party has the moral high ground or the ethical high ground to behave the way that they did in the House yesterday. The only thing that saved Pintard is, I think, in today's paper, we see Pintard saying that he has not received. Uh, he has not received the list of names from the Public Disclosure Committee. Yet. Yet. So, so, no, we got to talk about that. But let's play that, 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 uh, that, that, that uh, note there, the voice note there. This is Michael Pintad with O.B. Wilshkam in the House Assembly. Yesterday. With the Speaker of the House. We're going to talk in about certain matters today. We're dealing with this bill. Yes. And the relevance is the Governor General's bill this morning. Madam Speaker, I have Please at least 12 more minutes and I intend to address matters of national importance. Madam Speaker, you do not have the ability to muzzle me. Let me say to members of the public who, say to members of the public who may just tune in. I've addressed the issue of the bill before us. There are other matters that I wish to address on behalf of the Bahamian people and the people of Marco City. I reserve the right to do so. Every member in this house, every member in this house, in the, every member in this is not a point of order. It is not a point of order. It is not a point of order. It is not. It is the chair and not a point of order. No, it is not a point of order. And I will not give it to you. You're misleading your constituents. You don't have. To you. No, I have not been sent anywhere. No, you are there, and boy, not me, bro. I ain't never worked for nobody. Never. I remember. Where is Ryan? All you ever do. Last one, I will extend for members to take their seat. Honorable member. Members. 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 Members, members, members. This is the last time I come in the call. Sergeant at Arms, get ready. Because the next one who raised their voice in here, the next one who gets up out of context in here, will be going down the red carpet. I'm so mad right now, you all know. The business of this house stands suspended until 24th of July. 2023 at 10 a.m. And when you come back here, you get thrown this place. And when you come back here, you get thrown this place. I, I'm so mad right now. My, I felt a <laughs> vexation of spirit, you know. I, I, I don't even know what to say because... <laughs> I, I felt... I, go ahead. I, I, I felt a disrespect. I, I felt that she was disrespected. Yeah. She was trying yeah. to get well, in control. It's, it's not just that she was disrespected. First of all, they're disrespecting each other. Go ahead. They're disrespecting the constituents they serve. They're only servants of the of the constituents who put them there. Uh -huh. And the constituents who work for nobody. He said he never worked for nobody. He never worked for nobody. He's not an Aaron boy. He was an Aaron boy. I can say, you know what? Maybe he didn't lie. I get the impression that you ain't work for nobody. I wish you hadn't have said that, honorable sir. Because we get the impression that ain't none of y'all working for nobody but yourselves. 
You can't be working for the Bahamian people. When is the last time we heard you all in the house take a stand for issues that matter not to you professionally, but to the people you serve? What about the Public Disclosure Committee? What about the publishing of names, right? And the list goes on. Look here, PLP and FNM MPs trade blame on BPL 13th of July, 23. Could you imagine the PLP and the FNM arguing over who is responsible for the state of BPL? I want to thank the Honorable Minister Glennis Hannah Martin for referencing some things in this article, right? And she says... Hannah Martin charged that under the previous administration, quote, there were some very questionable dealings regarding BPL. Quote, I'm prepared to move on, you know, but don't cause me to go back there, she said. Don't forget there was 90 million in fuel arrears that were gifted by the former administration. She also raised the controversial 2018 firing of BPL board members while Bannister was minister responsible. But you remember that because you were also in the house? Honorable Minister, you were there for the whole thing. You were also a part of the government. You guys, you all, you honorable men and women, you do not have the moral authority, nor are you exercising the integrity that warrants such outbursts in the House of Assembly. Ian, I, I have a text. Uh, the text uh, said to me, is a, this is the first time I haven't heard um, Aaron say anything about Tug and Bobo. Tugi. And Bobo and murder for hire. Uh, yeah, but they, they always get the stew fish, and they always hire them <laughs> on the, the clean roads. So they both they both look party, no two and Bobo. They they, a, a and B, they lucky they ain't in the house. We're talking about those who have to carry the badge called honorable member. Eric, right? we have a phone call here. Let's pass this phone call through. Go ahead, call it. Can you hear me? Morning, yes. Morning, Mr. Nguyen. Morning, Aaron. Um, the Honorable Obi, my cousin, he never worked for nobody. So I guess when he was at the nest, I guess he was the owner. And when he's out of power, he still worked for somebody. Okay? I know. Okay? So tell him, don't say that. He misspoke. He misspoke in his passion. We, we, well, we do that all the time. And we understand it was a response to a retort, and I'm not even sure if it's appropriate I'm not even sure if it's appropriate to repeat the retort mm -hmm. out loud, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I get it. He was responding to a jail mm -hmm. that was thrown at him. Mm -hmm. But y'all must remember where you are at all times. Mm -hmm. Because how is it, can you ask ordinary Bahamians to moderate their behavior, mm -hmm. right? To manage conflict as mature, responsible adults. When y'all go into the house and argue over the most unnecessary things. Before I go to the next caller. Usually, we tend to critique uh, the Speaker of the House harshly. Yeah. And say, there are even, I saw some commentary saying that she's brash, right? I, I, this particular time, I felt her frustration. Mm -hmm. I understood her need to be brash, right? Because, like you said, the two members of Parliament not only disrespected her and, her, and her authority, like you said, the chair, they, always, they also disrespected the people who are watching, the citizens, the time frame on what's happening. I, I am concerned. But I, I, I am going to go to, this, uh, to the callers now, but I want to also speak. What do you mean the, the, the leader of the opposition has yet to get the names of the, those persons who Man. see something wrong? Who, who is the chairman for the disclosure com uh, committee again? Because that person needs to get fired. Bishop Cooper? Bishop Cooper needs to be fired. Because something is wrong. You can't have the leader of the opposition saying that he has yet to get the names when the Bishop Cooper already said the names were sent. You want to take the calls and then we go Let, to the let's article? Go, let's go to the calls there. Yeah. Producer, pass the call through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Nearing. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, morning. Listen, like I said, I think it was last week, the list of, of, of persons to be fired that Aaron had, um, like, remember I'm saying that the, bishop, the good bishop needs to go on that list? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I mean, on the uh, Prime Minister Davis and those, you know, who is not working in his party for nobody, uh, actually the Prime Minister alongside him. I'm trying to figure out now what, 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 what's next. You know, we've had a second Prime Minister emerge. Now we have a, a person that works for nobody emerge. I mean, 
come on, this is like a, 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 a show. My, my grandma used to call it a poppy show. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's important, see, because you, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees, right? And they're in the thick of it. And for some of them, they've been in the thick of it for a couple decades now, right? Uh, and maybe, maybe they can't see uh, from within what we can see from without, you know? Maybe I give them a buy. Maybe that's what it is. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Not for Obi Wilson. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. He's, he's, he's been there too long to, to even by mistake to allow that to come out of his mouth that he works for nobody. That means all these years he's been there, his constituents, his constituents got nothing from him. Nothing. Because he, he boldly said he works for nobody. So what is you what are you doing there? Yeah, these are these are questions. Uh, what's um, Mr. Nuri, what what uh, uh, Mr. Money's I, I, I think what constituency the context. what constituency does he uh, represent? Who? West End and Bimini, eh? West End and Bimini. You mean the place where they didn't have the fire truck? Lord uh -huh. Okay, never mind. We're going to move on, ma'am. Thank you very much for that call, eh? Yes, let's go to the yes, next caller, I, producer. I, I, gotta... Let's push that caller through quickly. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Call again once. Call again twice. Call again, can you hear me? Let's go to the next one. Call again once. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm okay. What I would like to know is what was said for Obi Wilson to make that remark? What, what was that? It was it was played in the clip, right? You could hear it in the clip, but it, it and it's under the audio. But basically, somebody called him an errand boy, oh, right? Good. And so I imagine that people within the political <laughs> space, people who've been following politics in the parties, they know right. exactly what that term means. There are and others yeah, out there that have no reference. Make this very short, right? What yes. what I blame these leaders, which is prime minister, for bringing these persons back. Because I feel like once you have served this country and you didn't serve it well, you didn't make an impact, you should never even get a chance to come back. You shouldn't even come back, you know? Because you don't work for nobody, you work for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. I, I think it was just a matter of uh, two males uh, showing um, who's, who's the bigger man, who's the boss. Um, I, I think he might have misspoken. It wasn't addressed to his constituents per se that he doesn't work for anybody per se. I think that was just a matter of two male egos just flaring in the house itself. You're just loud. Yeah. They're just as loud. Seems disrespectful, especially for honorable men who are seasoned politicians in the House Assembly, especially when the Speaker was on her feet, especially when she complained about being dis disrespected before, especially when she is a woman trying to manage uh, men in, uh, in, in an unruly state. It, it does not seem well for our politics. It, and, and it makes it even bold to the point where I, I believe that our Prime Minister like travel. He just don't like being around these people. It, it also speaks to a, a cultural issue, right? It appears as if we as adults do not have the ability or do not understand how we exercise our authority, right? I'm a, I'm a person with authority amongst other people with authority, right? And we don't understand how that lateral authority and that lateral power works. We used to top down power structures. I is the boss and everybody under me answers to me, mm -hmm. right? And, and we see that culture across the country in all kinds of different spheres where we refuse to acknowledge that the people around us also have levels of or degrees of authority that must be acknowledged and respected, mm. right? Like even young people have a degree, a degree of authority over their feelings and what they think and what they believe in. But we as adults, we disregard that entirely. And we raise children telling them, you don't get to think what you want to think, and you don't get to believe what you want to believe. This is a deep cultural problem. Let's take this quick commercial break right now. We need to pay the bills. But Aaron, I need one more topic before we go. But uh, producer, play the music, and we'll be right back. Guiding Radio in the AM with C.A. Nuri. Of course, Aaron Green is with me. Of course, Ian Munnings with me. We are analyzing what is trending inside the news, and we will be right back. Mm -hmm. 
love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And welcome back to Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. Um, we're talking about public disclosure, right? And who's the chair of the public disclosure? Reverend whom again? I think, I think it's Coop, Bishop Cooper. Bishop I think Cooper. Victor, Victor Cooper. But who is the Bishop chairman of the disclosure committee. In December, all members of parliament, senators, and permanent secretaries supposed to declare. Uh, March is the extended deadline where if you didn't declare before, you must declare. I like that word, extended deadline. Yes. March, April, June, uh, Bishop Cooper came back and said that one or two people didn't declare. We're waiting on investigating. We're going to send it to the Prime Minister. Then July, he came then back July and said came some back. civil servants and PSs, senior P, you know, civil servants, servants and PSs haven't declared yet. And he, and people asked him, what about the MBC he Shaw? Yeah. He just don't have the report. He just, right. I was going to say lost, but I'm not going to disrespect the, the position. But the, now we have the, no, then he came and said that he has sent the list of those he who He said have, that? Yes, he said he has sent the list to the Prime Minister and to the leader of the opposition. That was July. And now, today is what, July... 20th. 20th. What is happening now? So we have an article in today's Tribune. The title is, Pintard Still Waiting on List on Disclosures. That's impossible. Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard said he is still waiting for Victor Cooper, the Public Disclosure Commission chairman, to reveal who failed to disclose their assets, income, and liabilities this year. Bishop Cooper told the Tribune last week that many senators and senior civil servants failed to follow the law. He said he sent a letter to Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis and Mr. Pintard with the names of those who failed to comply. Only the Prime Minister or leader of the opposition could table the list in Parliament or forward it to the Office of the Attorney General for potential prosecution. Mr. Pintard said he had received nothing yet. Quote, we have also formally written to him to get the information just so that we can also encourage and challenge colleagues to submit if only the if initial information because, and we're going to go to page five, because the way it is structured, you can submit information if there are things that are missing, he said. But again, no, I have not received any information, and so it's hopeful that the chairman would send it. I tell you all, hope is a weapon mm. that can be wielded against you, right? Mr. Pintard said FNM members have complied with the law. You mean all the FNMs already declare? Now, so, this isn't well, a quote. Well, there ain't much of them well, anyhow. What do you mean? There's a PLP but then? There, there's senators well, as well. I don't well. know. I just said there much of them. But there's senators <laughs> as well, right? Uh, that's not a quote. It, the article reads... Mr. Pintard said FNM members have complied with the law. Quote, the chair ought to reveal, and if there are persons who have not submitted items, they ought to write them specifically so that it could be remedied. And so we're concerned, he said. Quote, historically there have not been, in, there have not been enforcement. Quote, in all respect, all of us should step up. What we do, how we behave, how we govern, and if you have made a mistake or misstep, correct it and get on with the business of representing people because this issue is a distraction. A pause. The issue is not a distraction. It is a fundamental issue. It is one of the most important 
issues. It is the check, it's one of the checks and balances. It is what we the people have available to us. It to cannot govern be, you. It cannot be fundamental and it's now July and the Prime Minister has yet to speak on it. It cannot be fundamental. I think you use the wrong, the wrong word. It is a fundamental check and balance using word for again. Parliament. You're moving from there. No, not at all. Yeah. This has been Guardian Radio in the AM with C.A. Like Nuri. <laughs> we, <laughs> Aaron Green was with me as we analyzed uh, the news and what was trending. Of course, Ian Munnings was here with us, who is regular on Mashup Wednesdays. Have a beautiful day. <laughs>